Hi, I'm Brandon. And I'm Dri. Welcome to our channel. Please subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon. And don't forget to like and comment on this video. All Filipinos going abroad as fiancés, spouses or family members of foreign nationals are required to attend the Commission on Filipinos Overseas. The CFO is an agency of the Philippine government under the office of the President tasked to promote and uphold the interests, rights and welfare of overseas Filipinos. Originally, I did my CFO in January 2020 before the pandemic. The first portion of the CFO is a seminar, essentially going over public transportation, domestic abyss, emergency numbers, and basic information about life in the United States. Next, there was a little bit of waiting for our one-on-one -on -one interview. During the interview he asked a lot of questions about my finance, our relationship, his home, and his relationship with his family. The amount of extra evidence and paperwork she asked for was actually quite overwhelming. She asked for more evidence than the embassy and some elaborating on what was submitted to the embassy. Team, we were told we couldn't finish the process until I had my actual visa in hand. The coronavirus caused a lot of uncertainty. Without a visible end in sight and little to no hope, I researched a lot, trying to find any way possible to get our process moving. We wrote a lot of letters, filled out a lot of forms, and signed endless amounts of petitions. None of the petitions surmounted to anything. Brandon even wrote the President of the United States a couple of times. The Trump administration never responded. Trump's presidential proclamations, travel bans, and delayed response to the pandemic was a calamity, especially for people like us going through the immigration process. Soon, the entire world was shut down. The possibility of hope seemed impossible. When I wrote President Biden, we did get a response from the White House. Even though they did not take any action specifically on our case, Biden did change the immigration laws and remove Trump's proclamations and implemented a real response to the pandemic, which eventually made things start moving again for our case. We wrote the embassy many times. Most of the time they did not respond at all. We even wrote the ambassador and the charge de affairs directly. Because of their lack of responses is why we began reaching out to government officials in the United States who helped with federal offices who refused to reply. Once we began getting our representatives contacting the embassy, that's when the embassy started acknowledging us. Brandon also wrote his Nevada representative in the United States Congress. His congressional district was the most caring, responsive, and helpful. His congresswoman Dina Titius was our most beneficial asset and strongest advocate for getting or cast moving, holding the embassy accountable, and ensuring she responded in a timely manner. For quite a while no matter what we did or who we contacted there was no movement in our case. So, I did some research and learned about a thing called a mandamus lawsuit. Essentially it would provide a court order for the embassy to process our case. I was apprehensive, but Brandon thoroughly shaked out a bunch of attorneys and the laws. At the time it seemed like our most beneficial possibility to be reunited. The attorney was very convincing, he said his wife was from the Philippines. All he handled was case like ours. He knew how to fight for us, and would get us results. So I paid him almost all of my life savings near $5,000. At first it seemed promising. Our case was filed in Washington DC and the list of defendants was overwhelmingly impressive. We were hopeful. But, before our case was even heard, a case law was enacted, saying that cases like ours would be thrown out due to precedence. Our attorney claimed the fight would be too difficult to continue and strongly suggested we move it for dismissal so not to affect our case as it stood with the embassy. Hiring the attorney ended up being a huge waste of time and money. After a while, and some ongoing contact with the embassy through the congresswoman, we got granted a expedited interview. Finally, real progress and real hope. Soon, I was on my way back to Manila for my embassy interview. After I received my visa, I had to finish the CFO process. 
response I received my CFO certificate I was teen fully ready and legally able to live for the United States. Due to the United States entry requirements Trey would have to bring his medical clearance paperwork and his proof of vaccination for the coronavirus with a second dose two weeks prior to departure. Finally, I was on my way to the United States, Brandon and I would be reunited after two years and two months apart. The end. Thanks for watching this video. Maraming salamat sa panunod na video and ito.